Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, here's a picture of me with the most iconic and beloved Star Wars character of all time. Speaking of franchises that feature an empire, let's take a look at the Napoleonic Empire in Phalanx Games' new game, Coalitions, coming to Kickstarter soon. In coalitions, one to six players take on the roles of the various belligerents in the Napoleonic Wars. There's Britain, France, Austria, Prussia, Russia, and the Ottoman Empire. The game board is a map of Europe featuring the terrain that belonged to these various uh, nations at the time, as well as contested regions. Now, the contested regions have a point value, an influence point value on them, whereas uh, others, uh, other areas, territories on the board, actually have kind of monetary values. Players have a number of armies. Uh, some start with generals, all their generals on the board. Some start with some of their generals on the board. They can bring others in later. Now, as the game progresses, you'll be able to put kind of these unit tokens under these generals. Each of these unit tokens is worth uh, three strength points. The general itself is worth one strength point. Now, throughout the game, you'll be moving around, you'll be conducting battles, and you can actually flip one of the uh, unit tokens beneath one of your generals over to make it a garrison and claim one of those contested regions for yourself. Every round begins with the kind of diplomatic political phase. Essentially, uh, Britain and France are always at war, but the other countries can decide which uh, coalition they want to be a part of, whether they want to be neutral that round, or whether they want to just be at war with everybody. Players can negotiate for about three minutes, and then they simultaneously reveal which coalition they are going to join for that round. Now, if a coalition joins with Britain, they get certain advantages. They can use sea travel with Britain's permission. They can gain extra influence points when they win battles. And Britain can also give their allies money at certain points in the game. Players can join France simply because they don't want France to squash them. Players can choose to be neutral, meaning they can't declare any wars that turn, they can't go, on, can't go anywhere to, to battle anybody, but critically, they do get double the production value if they are at peace. And of course, if they're at war with everybody, then they can just attack anybody at any time and take what they want. Now, the game centers around a rondelle. There's a rondelle of different actions, and there's a gear in the center that has the different players' uh, national flags. So as you twist that, the different players are going to do a new action every round. And you can do all of these actions more or less simultaneously. The first action is the battle card exchange. Now, you're going to have a number of battle cards, and I'll explain more about that later, but you can essentially swap out a battle card. You can uh, draw a battle card, and then you discard a battle card. Next, you have taxation, where you gain money from all of the territories with a printed monetary value on them. Next, you have leadership. You can place any or all of your off-map generals onto the board, or you can draw a card, or you can gain a morale on the morale track. More on that later. During leadership, France can also just freely move their Napoleonic figure, and Britain can actually choose at that time to give some of its money to its allies. Next, you have mobilization. Essentially, you can mobilize your units. You can build up new armies, you can buy morale points, and you can buy uh, more battle cards. Each of them costs one, one per token, one per morale point, and one per battle card. Next, you have gain influence. Essentially, you look at all the contested areas that you control that have your color on it. You go ahead, you find all of those, you add up the influence uh, values of all of those territories, and then you move forward on the influence track. This is kind of your victory points track. 
Finally, you have movement. Now, movement here works in a kind of an unusual way. Essentially, what happens is every time you move, you have to pick an enabler or an allower, and this person is someone who is not in your coalition. It could be someone who is in the opposing coalition, neutral, or at war with anybody, but it just simply can't, cannot be someone who is on your side at that moment. Now, once you've picked your enabler, you go ahead and you can move all of your uh, generals and their armies once. You can move them all one adjacent space. Now, the enabler will actually get a morale point for that move. Now, if the player wants to move again, they have to ask the allower or the enabler's permission. If he grants permission, uh, then the player can move all of their units again, but this time the enabler gets two more morale points, and then the player can ask the enabler to allow him to move a third time. If he does that, he gets three more morale points, so there's a total of six morale points that the enabler can get if he grants all the movements and the player wishes to take all the movements during their turn. Now, whenever one uh, player uh, moves his armies into the location with another player who is not in the same coalition, battle ensues. Now, initially, what you're going to do is you're going to look at all of the strength uh, value tokens that you've got, as well as your general. You're going to add those up and mark it on the track. Uh, same thing with your enemy. Next, you're going to see if you can gain support, either from your armies that are adjacent to that space or other friendly armies that are in your coalition that are adjacent to that space, and then you move it up the appropriate level of strength points for that as well. And then your enemy can do the same thing. They can go ahead and see if they can lend support from uh, adjacent uh, armies as well. Next, you're going to go ahead and add battle cards to the battle. Now, um, essentially, the attacker can add a battle card, then the defender, then the attacker. But the battle cards have numbers printed on them. Now, these numbers cannot exceed your current morale track standing. So if you've got a, uh, you know, if you're at seven on the morale track, then you simply cannot commit car more cards that would add up to seven uh, in that battle. So once you're done committing cards, you reveal all the cards, and whoever has uh, the most strength wins that battle, and both sides have to subtract that number of uh, uh, morale points from the, number, the total number of battle card, uh, battle card points played. Now, the defeated player loses uh, their armies, their general goes back to their capital. The attacking player loses one uh, of his armies from the attacking uh, unit, as well as any uh, players that supported him lose one as well. Uh, those that, that supported a defense also lose one. So once you get all that figured out, then of course if the player is in that area, they can flip over one of their other tokens to claim that as uh, to claim that with that garrison, so that that potentially will add to their uh, influence points or their money. So every round, players are going around and around. They're deciding which coalition they're going to be in with some negotiation. They are moving and attacking. They're building units. They're collecting money for units. They're doing all of these things until you reach the end game. Now, the end game is triggered as soon as one player gets to uh, 40 points, 40 influence points on the board, or if ever Paris falls to the uh, British coalition. As soon as either of those conditions are met, then that player wins coalitions. So that is just a brief overview. There's a lot more stuff going on here in coalitions. Essentially, this is a combination of a diplomatic uh, game and a war game. It, it kind of meshes those things together. But there is also a solo component. Essentially, you're playing as the British coalition trying to defeat Napoleon. If Napoleon gets to 40 influence points, you lose. But if you can conquer Paris, you win. And that's driven uh, with, a, with a card mechanic there. So there is a lot of different things going on in this game that's going to appeal to a lot of different people. Now, as I say, this is a game that requires a certain level of negotiation. Uh, you have to go ahead and figure out every round where you're going to be on the coalition track. If you're not Britain and France, you have to figure out who you're going to join. Like I say, all things being equal, it's, it's usually more advantageous to be on Britain's side because there's, there's certain things you can do. But France is always there and it's always kind of menacing and you're always a little afraid of it. So this game will be on Kickstarter very quickly. Uh, I will put the uh, link to the Kickstarter campaign in the description here. You can check this out and see if this is something that you might be interested in. If this kind of thing appeals to you, you will definitely want to check out the full Kickstarter page and see if that is something that you want to back. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. If you like military history, I'd urge you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about a lot of these uh, fun things in military history. And we'd also ask you to please give us a thumb on BoardGameGeek to this video. We'd appreciate that very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I really think the reason why the Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy failed was because there was no Jar Jar Binks. I'm kidding, of course.
Nothing could have saved that crap. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Like, if it benefits... I'm looking for a good ally. I'm looking for somebody <laughs> that's got my back and, you know, I'm like, yeah, so far, you've been kind of everywhere, so...